Hi. Uh, my company, uh, I, I've actually lived off-grid for 35 years. I started in off-grid solar in the late 70s, 78, 79. Uh, I started with, uh, there's just one vendor that's here, actually two vendors that are here right now that were actually around when I started, that's AEE and also Unirac. I have a ranch in Escondido, California. I've been off-grid for 35 years, and my Crown batteries are 24 years old this year. And they're still at 90%, uh, an hour after sunset, they're still sitting at 90%. Now, how did I manage to do this? I've done a lot of work on what we call battery rescue. Uh, these batteries were rescued at 19 years old, and they were treated pretty, pretty well. I met the guy up in the Central Valley who had them at his ranch, and these batteries were uh, similar to mine. They were taken care of well. They were indoor. They were indoors or in a bed. They were actually in a barn and had trackers hooked up to them, and they were charging in the sweet spot. Now, what is the sweet spot on charging batteries? So, if if my batteries are 1,200 amp hours. My solar system charges in what we consider to be the sweet spot, which would be 10, 10 to 20 percent of amp hour rating. Mine are actually charging at about 15 percent, roughly around 145, 150 amps with my solar arrays. And that's very important. You have to charge your batteries at the right, in the right sweet spot, and then discharge. I don't discharge in the winter time. I discharge them the most. I discharge them about 50% uh, uh, because of the lack of rainy season and that sort of thing. But in the summertime, they're, they're discharged maybe about 30, 35% because we have a, a lot of our loads that are DC coupled in. Uh, the batteries are full and we're running right off the solar uh, to run our pumps and run our uh, coolers and different things that we have. One of the major keys is that um, I don't discharge them more than 50% and those batteries are floated every day without fail. Rain or shine, they get floated. Sometimes if we have uh, overcast and rain for three, four days at a time, we have to use the generator. Oh. But they, they get charged every day without fail. So that's, that's one of my keys to having gotten the long life is a is a good good profile I built the system is built properly it has the proper charge rate and it has the uh, proper discharge rate and they're floated daily now we've done a lot of work all over the country and one of the major one of the other major issues if you're going to put your batteries in a cold location we've done a lot of work on the Navajo and Hopi reservations. And if, you, if you're going to be working in a cold climate, you've got, you can't freeze your batteries. There are so many frozen batteries up in that area. What happened was a lot of well-intended uh, people, nonprofits and otherwise funded projects, they put in solar systems and the batteries died because of freezing temperatures. What we did is we built a, I designed and built a a solar heated uh, little room, an eight, four by eight room, where we have the CR390 batteries and we have the inverter. We have an Outback um, 3648 inverter. And, and these, the room has also has, it was a water and power project, so we put in a 500 gallon water tank and a pressure pump to provide them with water. They haul their water there. And what, what we did, managed to do is with the combination that we have a hot air panel that heats the room during the daytime and in the winter time and warms up that water and warms the room and that room is highly insulated and it keeps the batteries warm. So those batteries are always in the sweet spot, winter and summer. It's also cool, cooled in the summer. So you have to perform routine maintenance on lead acid batteries. I recommend a real good temperature compensated hydrometer and recommend that you, for my batteries, I, in the earlier days, I um, equalize them less, but because I'm, we're on them and use them every day, we equalize them about every 10 days. And we look for 
getting equal readings across all the battery cells. That's what equalizing does, is equalizes the, the cell voltage. And we've got a couple batteries that are a little low right now, and we have to work on them to get them back up, but they all come back up. And you don't, if you don't exceed that 50% discharge and you float your batteries uh, on a daily basis and get them uh, back up in that sweet spot, at least uh, if you're off grid, at least every 30, 45 days, depending on which battery you have, whether it's an L16 or a two volt. My batteries are the two volt, 1200 amp hour ones that are over here to the right. Uh, it's a single metal case battery. So don't exceed 50% and uh, equalize at least once every 45 days if it's an L16 or every 90 days uh, if the batteries are newer. As they get older, they're gonna need more work and uh, more attention. But generally speaking, my batteries don't get that much attention and may, everybody says that wet cells require a tremendous amount of attention, they don't. They really don't. If you water them and you cycle them right then, and keep them in their sweet spot, you're maybe looking at them once every 45 days or so. The best case scenarios, you know, you have to be careful and watch that C20 uh, discharge rate. Uh, on a, if you're off grid, you're going to want to discharge that battery over 20 hours and watch that rate. It, the more, the deeper you discharge them, if you're putting on a a compressor driven air conditioning onto a lead acid or even a lithium or an AGM battery, you're gonna really, you're gonna drop them into that five hour or 10 hour rate and you're going to end up having to work harder. They're less, more cycles, less lifetime, and a lot more work to keep them equalized. So what you, if you're going to be using air conditioning or heating, what you wanna do is is look into AC coupling, both Schneider Electric and, and uh, we've got a very large, largest one in North America the, uh, at the Star School in Flagstaff, Arizona. We have a large Sunny Island AC coupled system and those bar batteries, when they charge up and charge back up from overnight use, they are hardly used during the daytime. We have 16 uh, Sunny Boy inverters hooked up to nine of the, uh, of the Sunny Island 6848 inverters. And so during the daytime, the electricity is coming right off the grid, just like a power grid. That's how we build the microgrids. Avoid battery sizing scams. It's really important. You've got to size, spend the time to size your battery, no matter what it is, if it's lithium technology or AGM technology or lead acid wet cells. You've got to match the size. We've gone, we do a lot of service work. I'm an authorized service center for Zandrex Schneider Electric, and we do a lot of work with uh, SMA grid tie inverters and, of, and Fronius and other inverters. You've got to watch your sizing if you're gonna add any battery backup. You, you normally, what we recommend if you're in one of the fire zones in California, or some of the other states that are now shutting off the power when the power grid's off, you want to look and try to power just your most critical loads, which would be lighting and your refrigerator or your gas furnace if you're in a cold climate. So if the salesperson tells you your battery's gonna last for 20 years, you better be sure and get, or 10 years, you better get third-party insurance and on the, on the, especially if they've not made it through a cycle. So in this picture, we show the little building, the four by eight structure, it's got a water tank to the left of this hot air panel. The single hot air panel, which is two by five feet, heats this little building. And these, th this was a high efficiency house that we did for Navajo Nation. This house is heated by, uh, there's about 12 feet of panels on both sides. This whole house is heated with hot air, and it's super insulated with, uh, with the high value insulation that we use. So it's about a 1,800 square foot house for a family uh, that was built to replace a railroad tie house. So, so climate, this is a climate where it gets 25 below zero, and so we built this structure to 
maintain the batteries. Uh, actually, uh, on a lot of the houses, uh, we didn't redo all their houses, just a few, few of them, but some of the houses that are so poorly constructed that you can, when the wind blows, you can feel it blowing inside the house, and if it gets real cold, then the elder, most of these were for elders that were 70 to 105 years old. What they can do is they can go inside of our room, lay down on our, it's about a five foot long, like a Rubbermaid uh, container, put their blanket out on that and sleep nice and comfy in that room if, if they can't heat the house or run out of wood. So ensure a robust means of control. You've got to know how much your battery is using. We recommend battery monitors to be able, Trimetric and other battery monitors to be able to monitor how much power is being used out of your battery so you can try to keep in that, C, that C20 C sweet spot for the lead acid battery or lithium or any technology that you have. You gotta know how much is coming out of the battery and you gotta know how much is going in. You gotta choose the right battery for your application. We wouldn't choose, uh, I've seen installations and we've replaced batteries in installations where they had eight strings of the GC2 batteries where they should have had the 24 of the two volt cells. It, we, our recommendation is not to go over three strings on a, on a battery set of batteries unless you're going into a bus. Uh, if you do that, what'll happen is you have connectivity problems or you end up with a cable loosening up, you get a battery that's not getting charged well, they'll short out and they'll take out your inverter or they'll damage your charge control. Since, my, since the birthday party last year, our batteries, uh, what we've had to do from time to time, last year was a really damp year with a lot of rain. So we still get, uh, we don't get wet inside the battery box, but it gets a little damp. So we changed our cables. You've got to watch this. If you've got an older solar system, what you've got to do from time to time is brighten up. At least we do it once a year as we do maintenance on and we pull all the cables off, clean the terminals, and put the terminals back on, check all the ends, and make sure that they're not getting hot. We had a couple hot terminals, so we cleaned them off, cooled them back off, and they're, they're nice and comfy again. Uh, we're, it's taken, uh, we had a rough year with all the rain, so we had to do more generator run in, in 29, early 2019. So we had to work a little bit more to get them equalized and that kind of stuff during the bad weather, but we're still sitting at 90% uh, at after an hour after sunset with a light load, and, and we, we last easily overnight uh, with all of our loads uh, and drop it to 50% and then recharge it every day. So we're doing really well still. We're probably likely to make it another four or five years so far as we see with the batteries.